Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about five things you can do to help bulletproof your 2014 through 2018 Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra. And a lot of times this will cross over even into the uh, suburban Yukon categories as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So right here, I've got my 2014 Silverado that has 128,000 miles and some change on it. And really, this has been a pretty reliable truck overall. Uh, I've drove it personally for about 40,000 miles of its life, and I have studied up on these trucks a ton. So I can give you a good idea of what you can do to uh, help extend the life of these trucks. Sometimes I feel like they get a bad rap. Uh, maybe just to the fact that, you know, they're not as reliable as some of the older trucks out there. And yeah, I think it's like anything else. With time, things change, new technology comes out. It's a little bit harder to work on now, but think about the same thing as like the 2000, or sorry, the 99 through 06. I'm sure in their time, people questioned how reliable they were gonna be long-term. But now they're kind of a pinnacle of reliability, really. And uh, they really don't have many issues or you know the issues at this point and they're relatively cheap to fix. It's kind of the same thing with these trucks for the most part, if you know what to look for. Item number one, let's talk about the engine. This truck does have the active fuel management in it, which basically means whenever it's not in a really high demand, it turns down to four cylinders instead of eight. So I will say I personally have not had any issues with that in the entire lifetime of this truck. However, it does scare some people, especially in 07, 08, they had a real big issue with that. So they do make something called a range finder. I'll leave it in the description down below that you can plug in to the OBD2 port on these trucks, which is right here where I have my amp steps plugged in, but you can just plug that bad boy in there and it'll leave this truck running as a V8 full time. So it's not a bad idea. I mean, whenever those cylinders aren't active, you got to wonder what's going on. So that's something to consider, something to buy if you're considered about a really longevity of this truck. I personally have not had issues. Second thing, still stay, staying in the engine compartment, I'll pop the hood to show you what we've got in there, is a catch can. And that is this little guy right here. You see this red thing right here? That is an oil catch can. So what that actually does is it catches oil and keeps it from washing over the intake. So this particular 5.3, it's a gasoline direct injection engine, also called GDI. You'll hear that sometimes. And kind of the easiest way to describe it is that in, in the engine, in a non-GDI, the injector is outside of the cylinder and it will actually spray gasoline on the back side of the valve, keeping it clean because gasoline is a really good detergent. These trucks, GDI, gasoline direct injection, fuel is directly injected into the cylinder by the injector. So the back of the valve never sees any gasoline or detergent to clean it up. So oil and crud and gunk can build up on it over time. So that's what the oil catch can does, is it actually catches that spare oil and keeps it from washing over the back of your valves, which over time will cause issues. Look at history with Volkswagen and different motors like that. Um, if it gets very bad, you have to tear it down and basically do a walnut blast of uh, the cylinders, the valves, and all that stuff. It's it's a very expensive job. So oil catch can can be had 50, I mean, sky's the limit. You can spend 50, 100 bucks on these things, but proof's in the pudding there. Look at the crud in there. Some of that is just water and moisture, but there is oil in there. But every once in a while, you just have to simply em empty this can out, more so in winter, because condensation builds up in there. But just remember every once in a while to fill it up, whether it's uh, on oil changes or regular maintenance intervals, whatever that is to you. Then you literally just screw the thing back on, like so. And that is a catch can. Third thing while we're in the engine compartment, let's talk about, I can't really show it to you very well here, but right in behind the grill here, you have a condenser. See the thing with fins and whatnot on there? A condenser. And that's a major component of your air conditioning. So if your air conditioning stops working, especially in these early models, 
2014 and 15 had this issue. I don't know if some of the uh, newer models had this issue, but it was a huge issue on almost every truck you see real early on, especially the 14s. Your condenser will leak. They had a spot, and I can't really show you in here. It's really tough to see. I think actually it may be down in there where uh, you can see a little bit of a weld. I think it was around that area. That, that weld will fail, and all of your Freon will leak out of the condenser, which in turn, if you don't have any Freon in there or any oil, your compressor's not gonna spin because it detects low pressure and you're not gonna have air conditioning. It's gonna run hot. So that can be a super expensive job to have replaced. Um, I've known guys that have paid a thousand bucks to have that condenser replaced. That's something you wanna look at. Test the AC if you can. Make sure that condenser is actually kicking in whenever you turn the AC on. If it isn't working, it's not the end of the world, guys. You don't have to go pay a pro a thousand bucks to do it. I've got what I'd like to say is a pretty good video on how to replace it. I did it myself for maybe a hundred, 120 bucks by the time I put free on in here. It's really a pretty easy job, but check out that video down below if you got a condenser you need to replace on one of these trucks. I've got a step-by-step -step tutorial how to do it. All right, lucky for you guys, that's everything engine-wise that we're gonna talk about. Next thing I wanna talk about is the transmission. You will hear, that's probably, besides the condenser of these early models, the number one thing you'll hear horror stories about is the transmission failing on these trucks, which it's true. They did a, what I would consider a pretty bad thing on these particular trucks. So what they did was they added a thermostat to it. That way it would basically open at 190, 195 degrees. I forget exactly what it is. And that's whenever the transmission starts cooling itself off. While the Dexron 6 can handle that sort of heat, I, I mean, I'm sorry, just everything I've always been told is heat is bad on a transmission. So what they did is they finally released GM themselves, which to me is kind of telling, is if these transmissions have issues, one of the first things they want to do is they want to replace the thermostat in there with one that opens at 150 or 155, I can't remember exactly. And it is, and it's up here under the frame a little ways. Oh, you can see the transmission pan there. It's to the side of it where you can see the lines are. I'm not gonna crawl down there to show you guys, but I do have a video on replacing that and exactly how to do it. Um, it's really easy. There's just a couple of bolts and some pins holding the transmission lines in. And then you basically take it apart with some um, zippering pliers and you can either do one of two things. You can flip the pill as they call it, which will basically let transmission fluid run through it all the time. And that, that'll that work if you're in a warm climate. The only problem I have with it though is if you're in a very cold climate, what can happen is that transmission never warms up any at all. It's debatable whether that's really important or not. I went ahead and myself, I put in the up updated thermostat for the transmission in there and it runs about 155 year round. That's whenever it opens and it works great. So if you're gonna buy one of these trucks, it's one of the very first things I would do is either flip that pill in there or to buy that updated thermostat transmission part. It's, I forget, 50, 80 bucks if you buy it direct from GM. And there's other solutions out there too, not just the one from GM. But I've got a good video on how to do that as well. So I'll leave that down below if I remember as well. So if I was gonna buy one of these, that's probably one of the first thing I would do, unless it's just got like 200K or something extreme on it, I'd probably drop the transmission pan drain the transmission fluid out of there and replace what was in the pan, which is six quarts, while I'm changing out that thermostat and that transmission. I would not, for nothing, I wouldn't change all the fluid out in these trucks. That's just asking for trouble. A lot of times it just breaks down and uh, has little bits that help the transmission grab and stick. So I would only do that in a gradual fashion. I wouldn't drain the entire transmission. I would only do it per the book drop the pan and refill what came out of the pan. All right, and then the last thing, number five, that I'll leave you with, it's kind of a little bit cliche, but I will say it, regular maintenance, guys. Even a rock solid built vehicle will not go very far without proper maintenance. So make sure you're changing the oil whenever you need to. On these trucks especially, one thing I would recommend is to, whenever you look at the book, they have a service interval. And you'll see these trucks, they say not to drop the pan on the transmission and change the filter until 90,000 miles. That's the very first interval. I wouldn't do that. There's a severe interval that you can follow. So every 45,000 miles, you're dropping the pan and changing the transmission oil. 
that's what I would be doing myself. Um, also goes with the transfer case. Um, as I mentioned earlier, oil, make sure you're changing your antifreeze in there. Just anything that you would want to do to keep a vehicle running for a long time. That's not just these trucks, but any trucks, but especially these trucks follow that severe interval maintenance, especially if you're like me living in the Ozarks. I live on a dirt road and constantly climbing and going down hills and mountains. So it needs that severe interval maintenance. All right, guys, did I miss something? If I did, if you've got one of these trucks and you've seen a problem or a common problem, especially if you're a mechanic, leave the comments down below. Help everybody out whenever trying to look for one of these trucks or if they've got one, how to keep them running and on the road as long as you can. I'm very confident this truck will see 200, 250,000 miles without too much of an issue. I mean, they really, I know people dog on them a little bit, but they're really pretty solid trucks. Right now in the sunlight, it's actually looking pretty good. I've actually been using a new, um, a new wax, if you will, a ceramic coat is actually what it is. But living on a dirt road, I've just come to where I despise cleaning a vehicle because it, it takes so much effort all the time. I was using New Finish quite a bit, which is a great product, by the way. But, you know, by the time you wash it, you dry it, you apply the new coat, you wipe it off, it can take a couple hours at least. So I've been using something new that's a spray ceramic wax, ceramic coating, whatever you want to call it. And I got to say, it's phenomenal. I'm able to do this truck once it's washed and dried, maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'm able to do my old Duramax over there, hiding behind the tractor too. And then my wife's car. I mean, in an hour, I can do all those vehicles once they're cleaned and prepped and ready to go. So I've really enjoyed that. And I may do a video on it because it just, it really beats the water, keeps the truck looking clean and takes no time. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Got lots of maintenance uh, tips on these trucks as well as my 04 LB7 Duramax over there and my newest toy here, my old Kubota tractor there. So lots of maintenance stuff coming up. You guys stick, stick around and enjoy. All right, until the next one, take care.